Well, g'day everyone, and welcome back to the channel. This week, we finally found a free camp. So go and get yourself a cold drink, and get your feet up, and come and join us for the adventure. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Alison. We decided a couple of years ago that we'd work hard and save all of our money and start living life on our own terms. So we bought a caravan and hit the road on a trip for two all around Australia. So why not come and join us every week for our adventures? Well, like we said in the intro, we finally found ourselves a free camp here in the Coopernook State Forest. And you can stay up to a month here, which is fantastic. It comes with picnic areas, it's got barbecues, tables, there's toilets, access to fresh water. There's a, the old cottage here, or the forestry headquarters, which was, I think, used for about 100 years or so. But some fascinating reading there, obviously not used anymore. Just beautiful drives through the forest. And we're going to use it as our base camp to go out and explore New South Wales's beautiful coastline out in the Crowdy Bay National Park. So we can't wait to take you along on that. Let's crack on. Well, good morning, everybody. What a beautiful day we got today. I was just packing some gear into the car here because we're off to day trip today, aren't we, both? We are off to on a day trip, sorry. <laughs> she didn't know that I was going to throw it on the camera then. <laughs> I was like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we're going to take a drive out to uh, Crowdy Head and then we're going to follow the coastline back up into Port Macquarie. So it should be fantastic. It, yeah, I think it will. It's a beautiful day. So I'm looking oh. forward to getting back to the coast and um, seeing these lovely beaches of New South Wales. They've oh, been yeah. spectacular so far. Yeah, and I'm even going to go and visit a place I used to holiday when I was a kid. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> Head into the um, Diamond Beach camping area, which is located in the Crowdy Bay National Park. Yes. Or it could be the Crowdy Head National Park. I've confused myself 19 times here. But it's a beautiful <laughs> drive in. It's a dirt road for the majority of us, isn't it, Al? It is, yeah. I tell you what, you know when you're driving on crap roads when the dirt roads are far better than the sealed roads as you come in. I think we just drove over one of the most potholed roads we've driven on. That includes the Cape. Yeah, it wasn't good. No, so anyway, we'll take you out and give you a bit of a look around. So, first off for the morning in the um, Crowdy Bay National Park is Kylie's Beach. We're at the campground. Yes, we oh. are at the campground. And we're just going to go for a walk out on the beach and check it out. Alright, well, I'm going to flick the camera in a second and show you the beach here at, um, at Kylie's Beach. It's also got four-wheel drive access, so I'll check the tides. Look like it's up at the moment. So I'm a little bit hard for four-wheel drive, and to be very honest with you, I don't really feel like letting me tyres down. But anyway, we'll take you out and give you a bit of a look around because what I can see right now, this is beautiful. I'll tell you what, Al, that bloody drive coming down that road, I know I said a little bit earlier that it was the dirt roads were better, but they're not. As you got closer and you come down that Diamond Head Road, my God, it was worse than some of the roads on the Cape, wasn't it? It was very corrugated, could do with um, a greater going over it, yes. Oh, definitely. But the reward when you get to the end, so we've come down to this, as we said, this is the first one, Kylie's Beach. This is absolutely beautiful down here, particularly just to come down around the rocks and watch the surf splash around. It's it's really, really nice. Yes, yet another beautiful beach on the New South Wales coastland. You could spend forever coming down the coast. Oh, yeah, you could. <laughs> Man, what a beautiful day. The, the water is a little cool, so I'm not going to go in for a swim, but just come down a little bit closer just to show you where we are. It's a beautiful spot. There you are. One thing that I enjoy and I don't enjoy at the same time is when we come away, some of the places that we go to have rules and they have them for very specific reasons. And I'm not saying you know, that we follow every single rule in the world, but the ones that deal with beaches and nesting turtles and those sorts of things, they're all fair enough. And this beach here at Kylie's Beach is definitely one of those beaches. And there's a sign 
100 metres behind us, which clearly says do not bring your vehicle down here. And yet, there's still dickheads who choose to do so. I don't know what they've got to gain by driving this extra 100 metres down the beach. It's beyond me. But anyway, each to their own. Ali and I were just discussing, I, um, last night I was thinking about how much I love it out west. I love being in the outback of Australia. It's a beautiful place, isn't it? I do love being out west. It's gorgeous. Then we come to these semi-remote beaches like this one here at Kylie's. And yeah, I love this just as much. So. I was going to say, you understand why you love being near the ocean as well. Oh so. yeah, it was so sport for choice. So yeah. sport for choice. <laughs> so, Alright, we're going to continue on. So we're going to go back towards Diamond Head. We'll give you a quick look through Kylie's campground on the way through. All the campgrounds we show in today's episode are all national park camps, with the exception of where staying at Coopernook. Yes. Um, but all the rest are. So obviously all national park rules and fees apply. Um, all right, so we're just going to take the walk up to Kylie's hut. It's about 350 metres up this track. Made our way out to Kylie's hut. Now, this hut originally belonged to Kylie Tennant. She was a writer and she wrote a book. What was it? Remember what the book was called? Uh, the Man on the Headland. Yeah, and she came out here and she met a very remote guy out here. I can't think of his last name, but I'm going to drop it in here for you now. And in return, he built her a writer's hut, which is not probably the one that you see behind her. I'd say this is a replica of the original. The original might have sat there, just looking at some of the foundations. But I'm thinking that with all the bushfires that have come through here in the last 10 to 20 years or so that it's gone. But in the 70s, she donated the hut and the land back to the National Park. And you can come out here and have a look at a traditional slab hut. It's very good to look at, isn't it, Al? It's not a bad walk. Yeah, yeah, it's an easy walk when you come up through the tracks. A little bit overgrown, but don't worry about that too much. <laughs> all right, so we'll just take a quick spin through the campgrounds here at Kylie's Beach. Look quite nice. There's a caretaker on site. Mm. Um, and I'm sure you'd need to book through New South Wales National Parks, but I'll let you yes. guys sort that out if you want to come out here and stay. But it looks like it's got all the normal facilities, so good sized camp areas, plenty of sun here if you want that. If you don't want sun, you just like shade, there's, it looks like there's plenty of that as well. Um, there's a toilet block here and yeah, easy access to the beach, both by foot and four wheel drive. So you can have a fire as well. I was seeing something about you need a fire pit, I, I believe. Um, and you can buy firewood from the office, which is good to know at present. Which is also right there. Oh, That's yes. the campground manager. <laughs> there you go. Next stop on the tour is Diamond Head Beach. It is. And that's also located at the Diamond Head Beach Campgrounds, which I'm going to say were absolutely or are absolutely packed, but very, very reminiscent of a caravan park, isn't it? It is. It's set up like the caravan park, but it's very popular. Very, very popular. Anyway, I'll give you a little look around. There's a lot of people in the background, so we won't put too much in, but I will show you this beautiful beach. Well, I've got to say, this beach is really good. It looks like there's a fair bit of stuff here for everybody. We can see people riding surfboards, kids swimming in um, rock pools, there's a bike over there fishing, there's lots of beach walking going on. And you can bring your car down for the day and sit down and have a picnic. It's pretty good, isn't it? It's wonderful. It yeah. really is a gem. It is. If the caravan park wasn't so bloody packed, we'd probably come down here and stay a couple of days. We'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks anyway. Here's a great little secluded part of the beach where you come down and set up. It's a little bit of water rolling. It's very, very nice down here. Very, very nice. All right, Diamond Head Beach, how what do you reckon? It's beautiful. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic here. Yeah? Um, I'd love to come down and stay a couple of days. You said that caravan park is chock a block at the moment, but maybe a little bit of midweek camping because it is the weekend. It is the weekend, yes. It is, yes. And it is good weather. It is, and here's a tip if you're coming down here, let the tyres down on the car and your caravan because that road is absolute rubbish. <laughs> absolute rubbish. Anyway. You can definitely do with a greater at the right. moment. And we've driven to Cape York, so we know what rubbish is. <laughs> All right, well, we hope you enjoyed the two campgrounds that we took you to. Um, it's all here in the Crowdy Bay National Park. We went to, the two campgrounds we went to was Kylie's 
and Diamond Beach. Yes. And they're both very nice. Um, Kylie's was a lot quieter, but a little bit more remote, wasn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah. when you come down to Diamond Beach, that's more mainstream, a lot more caravans, a lot more younger families and things like that. Seems quite popular. Oh, very, very popular. And as we said, it's a great weekend, so it's, that's it's brilliant. definitely it's going brilliant to draw the clouds in. Yeah. Um, we didn't go to Indian Head, but if you do go there, there is a walking and do out to the natural arch. We didn't go that far today. But we did go to Split Rock that we showed you a little bit earlier, and that was well worth the walk around. That's a dive. Diamond Bay, so that was really nice, wasn't it? It was, yeah. 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 And there is a lot of walks um, in this area. All right. Well, we were going to drive back out the way we come in. We're going to take the lesser of two evils and drive to Laurenton. Um, <laughs> it's only six k's on this crap road, rather than go back another twenty k's on the crap road. And we'll see what happens when we get to Laurenton. I can just got a feeling we're going to be on crap roads most of the day. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to head up towards Port Macquarie. We're going to stop in an old holiday destination I used to go to when I was a kid. About fifty years ago, it was fifty years ago, nineteen seventy-four. <laughs> I remember it because it rained. We used to come to Lake Cathy when I was younger, and or Cato. I can't remember exactly how it's pronounced. We used to come here and holiday. I think um, some friends of our family might have owned a unit here, and my mother and father used to, to let it. And the only thing I remembered, it was near a bowling club. So just poke over here, Al. We can see the bowling club. Yes. There it is. And to my disbelief, 50 years later, here's the place we used to stay, which was a, like a hotel motel, like a motel -y type thing from memory. The Sandpiper units. There you go, they still exist. And it was just a quick walk directly across to the beach. But it's changed so much, and obviously it has in 50 years. It's now got a bit of a parkland yeah. and um, barbecue area and, and family fun. But the, um, the, the little lake area is still there. Well, we got ourselves a bit of an overcast day today, so it's time to do a little bit of administration around the caravan and to go and do a little bit of shopping. Because one thing that we find we're off grid for quite a while is you do run out of your provisions. We don't like to carry a lot with us, but what sorts of things do we normally need to get out? Oh, the typical things you do at home, bread, milk, fruit and veg, they diminish fairly quickly. Yeah, yeah. We're going to shoot into Taree today and we're going to go to, there's a Woolworths there, we'll go there. I think there's a Carl's here and a few other supermarkets, but mm. most of the towns that you find, it doesn't matter where you are, um, there's always a spa or a, um, a 7-Eleven or there's something there you can go and get a few groceries from. But we do try and shop a bit smart and bulk buy in the cheaper areas before we head out into the more expensive areas, don't we? Yeah, it's sensible, yeah. Get, get your basics um, in the city type areas and then you can support the locals with the other little things yeah certainly and the other thing we need to do obviously when you've been off grid for you know five or six days at some point you need to go and empty the loose so we'll shoot around to a dump point and get rid of it as well all right we're just coming into the rotary park in taree this is where you'll find the dump point so if you're staying up at kubanook in the free camp there's two dump points there's one either side here there's one in taree which is about 20 k's away and one in cube which is about 25 k's away we come to taree because we need to go to woolies and that and do a little bit of shopping but if we're just going out for a nice drive and a bit of morning tea or something, we probably would have driven to the one up at Q, are you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Here's the dump point here. Online it's rated as two stars. Um, I used it already, and I understand why it's rated as two stars. But anyway, it is what it is. It's a dump point. Our toilet's empty, so everybody's happy. So we're going to head back to the camp now, and if the weather clears out, um, we might take you for a bit of a drive around the forest. That'll be good. It's quite a lovely place actually oh. where we're staying. Just taking a drive this afternoon up to Vincent's Lookout, which is about um, nine kilometres away from the campsite. So it's a single lane, dirt track. It's pretty easy to negotiate, but we haven't had to get around any other cars at the moment either, have we? So no, not really. You seem to find the most room though, if you need to get around someone, is in the corners because there seems to be more room there the logging trucks do use this road so you just need to be mindful of that too if you come up here i'd say particularly on a weekday but today is sunday so hopefully we don't encounter any but anyway so what happens we get to the top <laughs> all right we read reviews on wiki camps from time to time about crap roads this one was 100 percent correct <laughs> holy dooly You it's have an old, arrived. It's an old bitumized road which is just done. I think it's past done. <laughs> I'd be better off just uh, gravelling it. Yes. <laughs> Alright, let's see what the view's like. Go it better be good. Well, here we are at the top of the lookout and I've got to say, even though it's a crap road coming up, 
it was worth the drive when you come up you can see everywhere. in fact i can see the ocean and i think we drove out there yesterday you won't be able to see the gopro but we drove out over there yesterday that was about 20 k's away yep and certainly that and then you just view out across the valley it's raining over here and it's sunny over there and then up into the great dividing range what a beautiful spot Definitely worth the drive to come up and have a look in and out. It was a beautiful view. It was. We got really lucky. The sun came out when we got the top here, so we got a great view across all the valleys right out to the ocean. We're about to negotiate the hill that comes back down from up here. There's a microwave tinker. Microwave tinker. There's a microwave <laughs> tower up here that comes from um, that's up here for Telstra. So obviously it's something that gets, I suppose, checked on every so often. Yeah, anyway, we're going to drop it into four wheel later, come down this hill because she's pretty steep and uh, there's some big washouts as you go down. We'll maybe give a crack on the old descent control and see how it goes. Anyway, we'll find out getting down the hill. All right, so this is the remains of the road. Let's take a nice and easy coming down here. There's a couple of big potholes. The camera might pick us falling up into them. Oh, gosh. But there's no real <laughs> avoiding them as you go. Um, I haven't put the descent control on just in second gear four wheel though. So the car do the work coming down the hill here, it's quite easy to negotiate in fact once you come past the top. Alright, the final part standing near the bottom, we just watched the blade come down and he bottomed right out as he come down, so we'll just take our time through that bit. All good. We're just driving through the Cooper Nook Forest at the moment, it's beautiful, isn't it Al? It's gorgeous. It's, um, it sort of changes, like you go up high and it's just like a sparse woodland I suppose would be the best way to describe it. When you come down low into the valley, or for those of the military mind, the re-entrant, it comes into um, a really thick, almost um, rainforesty type of area, doesn't it? It does, yeah. You can definitely see some rainforest. Yeah, it's a yeah, beautiful place, beautiful park to come and stay in, very peaceful. Mm, yes it is. And these tracks seem to be endless there, right throughout the place. So maybe a little bit more research, uh, particularly if you're into your four-wheel driving or your um, two-wheel on the motocross bikes. We just met some boys up the top then, didn't we? We did. We met um, a couple of uh, three young fellas um, out having a Sunday ride. They said they often come up here and they love the tracks up here. So um, it's a good place to come if you're into uh, four-wheel drive and motocross, that's for sure. Oh, definitely. Um, and the only other thing I'll say is don't take a two-wheel drive car up to the lookout. You might be able to get it, say, as far as um, the base of the, the formerly tarred road, but you won't go any further than that. Yes. And even then, I'd be a little bit reluctant to take it up there. So, yeah, two-wheel drives definitely get you to and from the campground. But as after that, I'll, I'll be a little bit dubious, I think. Yeah, in some areas, I wouldn't take the two-wheel drive, I know. One of the things that I really struggle with when we free camp is just, you know, you've got 85 acres of land to go and camp on. You can see here around us, there's nothing. But I'll just take the other side of the van because we've just come back from up and look here. Dun, dun, dun. Every time, I should buy a generator and start it. Well, we're out for a little bit of a walk this morning. Right next to the campground, you'll find a walk. I think it's called the Tall Trees Walk. I think so, yes. Something like it's really easy to locate if you come and stay here at the campgrounds. And it goes to about 400 metres. But something that we didn't know was this forms part of the old Cobham Co route. It does, yes. Which you do find a lot around as you travel around different areas of Australia. And the other thing is they found in the forest itself some old convict camps, which was quite interesting. And the track that we're walking on actually has sections of it that was the original road that was built by convicts. 
very interesting. Yeah, it was quite interesting. So anyway, it's a beautiful walk, lots of tall trees, because as I think we might have mentioned before, this is a forestry and they've been uh, cutting down trees here for well over 100 years. Yes, they have. Well over 100 years, but it's a beautiful place to come and see. It is wonderful. Well, right, let's continue on the walk. There's some really beautiful old trees here in the forest. They're huge. All right, so the section of track that we come to shows some remnants of the old road to Port Macquarie. I'm not exactly sure what we're looking at, but just looking at the ground here, there's quite a depression here as opposed to the rest of the track that we've walked along. So I'm assuming that this is the old part of the track right here. What do you reckon, Al? I guess so. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> they weren't very um, definitive of where we where to look at. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly, you just get that sign. But anyway, yeah, I, I think that where we are, we're quite right where we are. So I've got to say that since we arrived at Cooper Nook, I've been on koala watch the entire time we're here. It's um, it no just koalas. no koalas. No, it seems to be one of those places where you might find them. And a guy pulled up last night, and the first thing he walked over and he said, Can you tell me, are there any koalas around here? So obviously, I'm not the only one who thinks it. <laughs> Well, we plan to get out and have a bit, bit of a look around Cooper Nook today um, and the town isn't as big as what we might have give it credit for. <laughs> it's a little bit small but there's a few things down here that are you know very very helpful if you're camping up in the state forest. Um, number one there's a little general store here we can get some just some groceries but nothing too spectacular there but bread and milk might be good. Yes, I believe the uh, store recently closed. Yeah, the main general store recently closed. Mm -hmm. um, the fuel was open here the other day, but closed <laughs> this morning. So, um, and that doesn't look like it's going to be reopening anytime soon, just based on what we saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, there is a pub stay here. So if you don't want to stay up into the campgrounds, you can come and stay down at the pub. And it's a beautiful little setting down there, wasn't it, Al? It was lovely, actually, by the river. Yeah, yeah it's right on the Manning River. Um, you camp out the back. There's uh, a rule, one rule there that I could read while we're having a look around because we didn't stay there, but you just can't unhitch when you go there. So that indicates to me it's probably just an overnighter. Um, but there's some lovely walks that go down along the riverfront. There's a pontoon and stuff you can go and stand on down there. Yes. And if you're into fishing, there's a boat ramp you can get onto the river down there as well. So, <laughs> yeah, that was all pretty good. But the, the township itself... Um, Look, it's just an it's just an old town. It's obviously had a, a huge history to it, particularly in the um, cattle and what was the other one? Else? It was the um, logging. logging industry. All right, I should know that we're staying up in the bloody state forest. Exactly. Moment. Yeah, but um, yeah, well worth a, a look and a stay. But up in the state forest, um, we've been up there now for seven nights. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's been quiet good. and peaceful, and it's just beautiful. And just the drives through the forest, it's really really nice. So. It is. All right. Well, we're going to head back to the forest. You got a little bit of work to do today. Yes, I'll touch base. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, we've got the caravan hooked up on the back and that brings us to the end of this week's episode. What did you think of Coopernook, Al? I actually quite enjoyed my time here at Coopernook Forestry um, Headquarters. It's a nice and quiet place to come and sit and relax. It certainly is, and as we told you at the start of the episode, you can stay for a month here, which was uh, really, really good. It's very good. So anyway, if you liked today's episode, make sure you hit the like button for us. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so because it does um, allow our channel to grow. And please leave us a comment, any question you like. We're more than happy to get back to you on that. And we look forward to next week's episode because it's going to be a little bit different, isn't it? It is going to be different. It's going to be something near and dear to Alison's heart. It's all about our travelling budget for living full time on the road. So if you've got any questions about that, make sure you hit us up in the comments. We'll try and answer them for you next week. Until then, you have yourselves a great week. We'll see you next Saturday. See ya. Bye-bye.